let's talk about solvent-free oil painting. So maybe you have heard before that painting, oil painting is uh, dangerous or toxic or a not a safe practice. Um, and there's some, some truth to that, although not entirely. There are definitely very safe ways to, uh, to paint with oils, even in traditional methods. But you need to be in the, in the right space and understand the, the safety concerns of the materials that you are working with. So if you are in a large, well-ventilated space, you know, like a, like a college painting studio, and you have um, the means necessary to dispose of your chemicals and your solvents, um, then oil painting is relatively safe, you know, unless you might develop some sensitivity to um, some fumes, or sometimes your skin can develop a little bit sensitivity to solvent, but there are ways around that, you know, wearing uh, a mask or gloves or some barrier uh, so that it doesn't come in contact with your, with your skin. But there are situations where uh, we don't have that perfect ideal space to paint with oils. We might be painting from home. Um, we might be painting somewhere with no ventilation or windows that don't open. Um, or in, in a situation like, um, like I find myself in now, I recently moved into this studio space and the studio is in a building that doesn't allow solvents in the, in the building. So when painting with oils or when people are talking about the dangers and the health risks of painting with oils, uh, the real thing they're talking about is the, the solvent. The solvent is what um, provides the most trouble or difficulty um, safety and health wise with, with oil paint. So if we think of paint and what paint is made of, all paint is composed of uh, pigment. Pigment which is the, the color of the paint and pigment is um, usually a powder, powdered form. Uh, you have a binder that holds the pigment together so that it sticks and it's paint. Um, so for oil paint, that binder is oil. So for most paints, it's linseed oil, although there's a brand of paint I really love that uses walnut oil as the, as the binder. So we have oil that binds it together. And then you have a solvent that uh, makes it more fluid and dilutes that paint. And so for like watercolor and acrylic, you use water for that. So water doesn't really pose any health risks and we can wash and rinse our brushes in water and that dirty paint water, um, as long as there's not big glob globs or chunks of acrylic in it, can go down the drain. Um, but that is not the case with oil paint. So our solvent for oil painting is uh, turpentine or mineral spirits. And turpentine and mineral spirits have fumes. Uh, they are flammable and they can absolutely not be poured down the drain. Now, there are safer um, turpen turpentine or mineral spirits alternatives that many art supply manufacturers create. Uh, Gamsol is a lower fume, less toxic um, type of solvent, but they still have some of those concerns and none of them should you pour down, down your drain. Now, if you are working with, with solvents on your, on your own and need to dispose of those, counties have places where you can just collect you know, your solvent over the year or so every six months, depending you know, how, how much you go through. And then you can just go take it to one of those waste facilities. So it's, it's simple, it's not a big deal, but a lot of people just don't bother or like the hassle of having to do that, of having to take your waste somewhere um, to be pro properly disposed of. So solvent is what um, creates this, this issue for us with oil painting. So if we want to safely oil paint, um, and we want to avoid any fumes or a possibility of um, fire, flammable substances, we need to eliminate the solvent, hence solvent-free oil painting. Uh, but the solvent's there for a reason. Solvent is really, really useful in, in oil painting. So really it does two main things for us that we need to find alternatives for to go solvent-free. So, and when I talk solvent-free, I'm talking like a, having a jar of solvent that you use to dilute your paint. Now, most oil paints have in the paint a little bit of solvent. It's a part of that, that paint, the, the pigment, the binder, the solvent. Um, but that's okay, that's not, as, that's not really where the, the big health risk comes, comes into play. It's really in having like a jar of open solvent in your studio. So solvent does two main things for us uh, in oil painting. Uh, one, it cleans our brushes. So the more you dilute paint with a solvent, like if you, you know, with acrylic or watercolor, the more water you add, you know, you can clean out your brushes, it breaks down that paint. So oil paint is no different. The more solvent you add, it um, cleans out the brushes, it breaks down that paint. Um, 
and it's your first step in getting the oil out of your bristles before you actually go wash your brushes with soap and water because you don't want oil paint going down your drain. It's oil. So finding an alternative for um, cleaning your brushes is actually the, the simpler uh, task here. So I've been using walnut oil to clean my brushes. So oil sticks to oil and I can just get my brush nice and oily. It'll grab onto that oil paint and wipe it out with a rag. And the walnut oil is a great solvent-free alternative to cleaning out my, my brushes. The other um, use for solvent that's a little trickier to find an alternative for is using solvent to create underpaintings. So generally the first step in oil painting is to create an underpainting. It's to create layers of very thin wash to plot out our composition, to lay out colors so it's, it's thin so you can move it around and play with, play with your painting um, and figure out all those you know, preparatory um, stages in the work before you really get into the bulk of your oil painting. Um, and solvent is wonderful for that. Uh, you can paint really thin washes that look like watercolor. They dry fairly quickly um, because if oil paint itself is extremely slow drying because oil doesn't really dry, it cures, and it takes a very long time to do that. Um, but the more solvent that's in it, that solvent just evaporates and, and it dries really, really quickly. So it allows you to build up really nice layers of washes very quickly to um, get a really great foundation for your painting. Now, uh, a lot of people who have ventured into this solvent-free oil painting have just decided to skip the underpainting stage altogether. So um, having your composition you know, drawn out on your white canvas and just starting to go in with uh, layers of oil. To me, this isn't very exciting. <laughs> it's, um, it takes away some of that fun spontaneity of um, the painting process and uh, if you take away the fun I'm, I'm not as interested anymore. So I love underpainting and I don't want to eliminate that from my process. Now you might think since we're using the walnut oil to clean our brushes that maybe we can just thin out paint with oil and it'll look really washy and give us that same effect. Um, or instead of walnut oil maybe a painting medium. But neither of those is a great idea. Um, oil is not going to work for this. So painting doesn't have, oil painting doesn't have many rules, but it does have one big one. That is the rule of painting fat over lean. So what that rule means is lean paint needs to be in your bottom underneath layers. And by lean, that means thin or not as much oil. And as we build up, our paint gets fatter. So it can get thicker or more oily. So if we do an underpainting with a ton of oil added into our paint, that paint's extremely fat and it's not going to dry and our painting is not going to be archival. Um, it's probably going to crack because if you put something that's going to dry quicker on top of something that's drying slowly and that hardens on top of this surface that's still moving, that causes cracks. So we don't want to use oil paint. And we don't really want to use the medium either. So medium does fatten our paint some. Um, and there, there are some situations where you can get, get away with using um, thinned medium in the underpaintings, but it's not, it's, it's not as stable or safe as it, as it could be for the longevity of your painting. So um, the alternative that, that, um, that I'm using and, and that some other solvent-free painters use is that I'm actually going to use thinned out acrylic as my underpainting because acrylic's still going to dry really fast. Um, I can thin it with water, which isn't, uh, you know, it kind of breaks down the integrity of the acrylic, but I'm covering it up. It's not an acrylic painting. It, it doesn't really matter. Um, or I can use a, a medium, an extender, to get a thinner coat of acrylic. And I can do several underpainting layers, work things out in the acrylic, knowing that I'm going to completely cover that in oil uh, once it's dry. Um, the acrylic works in that uh, acrylic paint is basically plastic. Uh, and actually the gesso that, our, that we cover our canvases or surfaces with is, has an acrylic base to it. It's not pure acrylic paint, but it, it has acrylic in it. So it's fine to paint oil on top of acrylic as long as that acrylic is completely dry. So, you know, acrylic dries in 
relatively quickly. If I'm doing thin washes, you know, probably a couple hours it would be dry. But to be safe, I'm gonna let, always let it sit over overnight, go back into it the next day with the oil. Um, and because that acrylic dries to this plastic surface, um, we can put the oil on top of it with no problem. However, once you go in with oil, don't ever go back on top of that with acrylic. Um, acrylic, it's plastic and dries fast. So again, it's gonna trap that oil under there and your painting's gonna crack. It, it doesn't work. They don't work well together. So only completely dried acrylic underneath your la layers of oil, uh, never the other way around. Also, um, another inconvenience or another little dilemma um, that this provided when I started doing these acrylic underpaintings is keeping track of my brushes. So before, all my brushes are oil painting brushes, so I just have brushes everywhere, and they're all used for oil paint. Uh, but you don't want to go back and forth between oil and acrylic on your brushes. Uh, once you have painted in oils, that oil never is gonna fully come out of your brush bristles. So uh, you don't wanna use those brushes again for acrylic. Uh, so we wanna have a designated set of acrylic brushes for your underpainting, which underpainting is really loose, so I just need basically one or two kind of fatter, flat brushes. Um, and those are just my acrylic underpainting brushes. And just put a little bit of tape or something on the handle if they look the same as all your other brushes and you know, those are my acrylic brushes. I don't touch those with the oil paint. So that's my brief overview of um, painting in the studio without solvent. Basically I'm using uh, walnut oil and acrylic paint to substitute for uh, the use of solvent in the oil painting process. So thanks for listening.